Move on to Sunday action again. All three of those Thursday night games, we'll, we'll, we will be live betting here together, and we are hot, very, very hot. The cash nine of our last 10 live bets. And the one loss was a cash out for half of it. We move on to Sunday, and we start with the only bet I've made. Tampa Bay Buccaneers, 5-5, five 2-2 and five, two and two on the road. The Cleveland Browns, 3-7, and 2-3 two and three at home. First Energy Stadium in Cleveland, Ohio, 49 Fahrenheit. Light rain, 18 miles per hour. <clears throat> There's showers before and after this game. So they have light rain for the two or three hours that this game is on right now, which could easily change to showers again. Uh, We'll see. And we have heavy winds, heavy winds in this one. This is the heaviest wind of any game this weekend. Let's start with the line history here in this one. We have... The Browns opening up at plus three at minus 102. They're now plus three at plus 107. The Bucks minus three has been juiced to minus 121. Move over to the total. Opened up at 44. It's now at 43. And there has been an eight cent move to the over today. It dropped from 44 to 43 last night. It's been an eight cent move to the over today. I'm on the under 43. Go over to the cash flow in this one. 2,521 tickets in. 29% of the tickets, 42% of the cash is on the Cleveland Browns. Then you have 73% of tickets, 97% of cash on the under. Bucks, Browns. Bucks come in fresh off their bye week. They were last seen in a 21-16 victory in Munich over the Seahawks. Brady looked strong, 22-29, 258 yards, two touchdowns to the pick. The Bucks entered the game with the league's worst rushing attack. Third-round pick out of Arizona State, Rashad White, could be changing that. He was an immediate difference maker, 22 carries for 105 yards. All of a sudden, Fournette looked okay, not being the RB1. 14 carries for 57 yards. They rushed for a season high, 161 yards. That's the first time they've gone over 100 yards rushing since week one. Uh, so they came in. Uh, even after even after that performance, they still are the second worst in the league, averaging 70.7 yards per game. Chris Godwin led receivers with six catches for 71 yards. They went 10 to 15 on third down. You know, <clears throat> they're starting. To, everything's starting to come together for them. Mike Evans is having a good season, on pace for another 1,000-yard season. Uh, Chris Godwin caught his first TD pass since knee surgery, and he looks strong. Uh, Julio Jones uh, now looks – He remember, he was out five games. He missed five games, so he's looking stronger. And their offense will improve. Right now, there's only five teams in the league that are averaging less than the 18.3 points per game that Tampa Bay has scored. Their defense looks strong. Seahawks had just 57 net yards in the first half. They shut down Kenneth Walker, 10 carries for 17 yards. And by the way, Fournette – Dealing with a hip pointer. So he is questionable at this point. And Devin White dealing with his father's death uh, has to inspire everybody on this football team. Nine tackles, three quarterback hits, two sacks, and forces a fumble. Uh, He found out on the bus going to the game, going to the airport. I mean, it's just that has to inspire everybody. So this defense, too, I know that there's been times where they've looked bad, but They're first in the league with 57 tackles for a loss, second with 32 sacks, third fewest points allowed, fifth in total defense. I think they start rolling. Cleveland comes into their final game without Deshaun Watson off a 31-23 loss to the Bills at Ford Field. They've lost six of seven. They were dominating the game through the first quarter and a half. Brissett had a fumble midway through the second quarter, and things kind of spiraled out of control. They had outgained. They'd outgain the Bills 181 to 12. Brissett 21, excuse me, 28 to 41 for 324 yards, three touchdowns, <clears throat> two yards shy of his career high. Uh, Mari Cooper bounced back from a subpar performance, eight catches for 113 yards. Donovan Peoples Jones with another big game. The Bills neutralized the Browns' run game. Chubb 14 carries for 19 yards. He did catch three passes for 48 yards. The Browns as a whole ran 26 times for 80 yards. They didn't get enough pressure on Allen. They finished with two sacks and four quarterback hits. And then they lose Ethan Pochich. Uh, their starting center, he's going to be out for weeks with a knee injury. So Pochich had played every snap at center for the Browns this season before the injury. And he had to step in for Nick Harris. Nick Harris had a season-ending knee injury in the first preseason game. And Pochich's numbers from Pro Football Focus are spectacular. 83 overall grade this year. He's just barely behind Creed Humphrey of the Chiefs as the best center in the whole league. So now you have Froholt, who... You know, was a Browns practice squad roster last season. 
And he had to come in when Wyatt Teller got hurt as a guard. But now you're asking this Denmark native who has a his pro football focus grade is 66. And he was given a grade of 50 against the Bills. So basically they have their fourth string center. That's who they have at center. Take it away for us here, Andy. Buccaneers Browns. Yeah, <clears throat> and people are talking about moving on Bucks futures. I'm up to my ears in Bucks futures. I've already essentially bet the Bucks in this game, so I can't be betting any more on them. My power rankings are in the in the way of like, hey Andy, maybe you should think about betting the Browns here. And I just I can't do that. I actually want to lean the other way with some of the matchups. Uh, Cleveland's been able to get after the pass rusher a little, but man, there are like five teams that are so bad against the run. I don't know if we've strayed so far from the light on like, Hey, everyone throws. We don't have to be good against the run anymore. And there are some teams opening up holes. You can drive trucks through Cleveland Browns are one of them. It stinks for Tampa that they're not a good running team, but like you alluded to, maybe they are now. Maybe they found something. Maybe Lenny is going to play okay if he's not forced into being the bell cow. Maybe they have a nice two-man rotation that they can use. If Tampa can run the ball, they probably cover this. They probably win. They cover. They're a better team. The defense is a lot better. Um, somebody, uh, Mac Beavers mentioning Akeem Hicks is back. That's a big boon, especially against a team in Cleveland that has a couple good running backs. So, yeah, I, I like the Bucks here. It's just uh, it's a little much for me, I think, right now. I'm I'm looking at a lot of these like minus three minus fours this week, and uh, I'm I'm tempted by a couple of them. I haven't uh, haven't gotten the the starch to look at this and bet it seriously, but I think part of that for me is the fact that I have some Tampa Bay futures, and I need games like this to go my way. I joined you when you first talked about the Tampa Bay futures, uh, and, and I only got nine to one. I think nine to one. I have to check. Uh, and I haven't gone back to the well at this point. What do you feel? What do you think about my under 43 in this one? The weather might be pretty gross. Like the, the weather reports aren't great. And uh, if Cleveland can't pass against this defense uh, and, and, you know, Hicks matters and this run defense plays to the level they can, it's a, uh, it might be a long day for, and I mentioned this earlier with Drew. Um, Brissett looks like he's pressing a little. Because he knows his time is nearly at an end, and he needs to put something on tape because he needs to find a job. Like essentially, this these last couple of games are his resume. This is what people are going to remember. He needs to find him if he wants to find a starting job next year. He needs to have a couple of good games, and I think it's making him worse. So, yeah, it, it, it's tough. And Burgundy Betts brings up: Do you trust the Bush, Bucks' rush defense after one good game in London? I would push back on that a little and say it was a really good run defense. You know, we've we've seen it under this regime, this coaching staff. We've seen this front four play really well against the run in the past. You know, just missing Hicks was a big problem. So it's, yeah, um, I do believe that they're going to stay good. And I think they're going to be a problem in the playoffs. They're going to be an annoying team to play with, a, you know, getting healthy, a veteran quarterback, maybe the most experienced playoff quarterback of all time. Maybe he'll have his head clear by then, but yeah. I, I like my under. I'm surprised there's been an eight-cent move to the over. Sky Dragon says apparently Tampa Bay is back because they got Seattle playing game at 6 a.m. He says whatever. I still don't think they're any good. Cleveland wins the game. It's there. Uh, Spend the penny bomb says I want to take three and a half, but Bucks are getting better and just want nothing to do with the Browns right now. Brady says it has to be a Brown spot, but I can't bet them this week. But damn, Bucks can't run the ball. Brady will struggle throwing in this weather, especially with no true slot wide receiver. Browns have to be the look. Hmm. Gerald Jones has been fading Cleveland. The run defense worse than Houston now. We'll fade with Watson too. Fade list. Uh, Chris Rock says Buck's probably more motivated, but with Watson coming back, they might put on a good show. Hard game to pick. All right. So, uh, and Brady says he only has this one left. Watson will play on, uh, against Houston next week, and he will be betting Houston already and money line next week. All right. Huh, that is the Bucks game. I'm already on the under 43, and I find it interesting that it's moving to three and a half. Which is well, a I hope the weather. Game. I hope the wind kicks up for you. Yeah, I I do too. I think it's going to be windy, and the 
moving it to three to three and a half is, is a big deal. Yeah. Um, obviously, they're going to get a p- bunch of Browns cash. 